Fala, Nick Fens! Beleza? Sou Victor Hatiba do canal Nick Fans Brasil, galera. Hoje, today, né? Vou receber aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil Adam Kester, né? Do Daily Knicks, né? Welcome, welcome, né? Eden to the Nick Fans Brasil channel, man. Thanks for having me on, Victor. I'm uh, I'm really excited to talk uh, about the NBA draft and uh, you know everything everything going on with the Knicks. So thanks for having me. Ah, thank you, man. Thanks to uh, Eden. Uh, could you could you introduce yourself for the all Brazilian fans? Sure thing. Yeah. Um, so I'm Adam Kester. Um, I work as the uh, as a site expert, um, an editor for DailyKnicks.com, um, where we you know cover everything Knicks for fan sided, and um, I also work as a social media manager and content creator for uh, Whistle Sports. Um, check them out. Not Knicks focused, but still um, you know everything basketball and NBA related uh, with them too. So. Uh, Yeah, once again, thanks again for having me on. Ah, great, man. Great. Bem, na parte da introdução, Vitor, ele disse que, que trabalha né, por Daily News né, é, e vem cobrindo os, os Knicks. E também é, no Whistle Sports, né? Falando sobre. Ele é, é gerente né, de, de mídias sociais lá. E ele vem cobrindo vários esportes e, e, claro, o, o basquete também. Vamos lá para a primeira pergunta. First question. Né? É, Aiden, I talk in Portuguese né, to Brazilians né? é, é, after in English for you. É, é, Eden, você, é, você poderia nos falar sobre Kai Soto né? e, e sobre a matéria que você escreveu no Daily Knicks? Ele é o novo Yao Ming, o carinha do Jabá das Filipinas. In English, could you tell us né, about Kai Soto that you wrote né, about him in the Daily Knicks? Is he a Yao Ming ou Karim Abdul Jabbar from the Philippines? So Kai Soto, it's uh, those are some big names to compare him to. He um... For one thing, he has a massive fan base, so he is really, really loved in the Philippines. Um, and he, he's had kind of an interesting career to this point. Um, he was going to play in the G League for Ignite, but there were some kind of COVID, some sort of COVID issues where he wanted to play with the national team, um, and it didn't work out. So then he ended up playing in Australia um, with the NBL, but... Yeah, he had a workout with the Knicks this past week and a, a good amount of teams. I want to say 10 or 12 different teams uh, worked him out. So, you know, he's, he's gathering a lot of interest from a bunch of teams around the NBA. O uh, que, que você poderia falar a mais né, uh, uh, sobre Kai Soto? What more uh, accents about uh, Kai Soto? Yeah, so I think a lot of people are really interested because... One, his size. He's enormous. Um, I've seen him listed at 7'4". I think he's closer to 7'2", 7'3". Exactly. So he's enormous. Um, but it's not just the size. Like, he, he can shoot. Um, he runs the floor pretty well. So it's not one of these things where he's just tall and just kind of a project. I think people have seen some flashes of, of different, you know, areas of the game where they say, hey, maybe this is someone in a couple of years from now could be a really dominant player. Um, but again, he's been playing in Australia, so I think a lot of teams want to get a kind of closer look at him. That's why he's getting all of these workouts, um, just to see, you know, really what they have in Kai Soto. Um, but it's easy to see why people are really excited about him. Ah, I like Kai Soto. I see, I saw, né, highlights, highlights, né, from, from this player. I love this man, guy. I love <laughs> Yeah, Vitor mentioned uh, a lot of channels, a lot of reports uh, mentioned about Kai Soto and, and how how talented he is because, uh, because uh, about his size, he can he can play and he have mobility. It's, it's, it's hard to find someone with with this type of that this type of player, for example, with the skills and uh, this this possibility to play the game and have the size. So. 
Yeah, and I think that's the thing, right? It's because not only is he enormous, uh, enormously tall, but he ha- he has certain skills that you kind of look for in in, in NBA big men, um, especially nowadays. You know, guys who can stretch the floor, shoot, pass a little bit. Um, he still has a long way to go. You know, it's kind of it's hard to it's hard to tell when someone's coming from the Australian league where they where they really stack up um, among other NBA big men. Um, he'll probably need to add some weight um, as well, but that stuff comes with time. You know, it could be a couple of years. So, um, you know, I think some team is definitely going to want to want to spend one of their picks on Soto just to um, you know just to see what they have in a couple of years because he could be a special player. You you know, you never know. E seria um exagero, Eden, é, comparar esse jogador com Yao Ming e Karim Abdul-Jabbar, como eu vi falando sobre esse jogador? <laughs> Translate for him, Bruno. Okay, yeah. Uh, Victor mentioned, yeah, if is is this is uh, uh, overreacting, for example, when the people compare him with the players like Yao Ming and Karim Dujaba, because they are landed in, in in this league, so it's it's hard, man, for his shoulder bring this to the league. You understand? Yeah, well, that's the thing. The, his, his fan base is so pa- passionate that they. They really hype him up. I mean, he's got a ton of fans in the Philippines because he'd be the first um, Philippine player in the NBA. So he has that pressure on his shoulders. I'm not going to compare him to Kareem or Yao myself. Um, I mean, there's other big men in this draft, you know, Holmgren and, and Durin, who are definitely going to, I would assume, go higher than Soto in this draft. Um, you know, I'm trying to think of some comparisons off the top of my head. It's It's interesting because, like I said earlier, he he's good at a lot of different little things. You know, I can't exactly pinpoint what kind of player he's going to be. Um, you know, the Yao Ming comparison, he I can kind of see where they're going with that just because of the extreme size and how well he moves. Like Yao Ming, you know, uh-huh. for how tall Yao Ming was, could move very yeah. well. So I can see where that one's um, coming from. But... Um, Yeah, I mean, it's it's really hard to say where he's going to go in the draft. Um, so if someone does believe he has that type of potential, um, you know, definitely worth taking a shot on. Bem, cara, é o seguinte, é, ele, basicamente o que ele disse, né, a respeito do Kai Soto, é que ele tem uma base de fãs muito grande, né, um jogador nacional, né, é, é uma expectativa muito grande das Filipinas, que nunca teve um jogador assim antes, né, e tal, e a fora dos requisitos que ele tem, né? Porque é um jogador extremamente alto, com mobilidade, o que é bem atrativo, né? Ele teve a possibilidade de ir para o Ignite para jogar de league, só que a questão de Covid e outras coisas acabou indo jogar na Austrália, né? Na NBL e vem mostrando é, bons requisitos lá, né? É um jogador, é um jogador bem diferente, tal, para posição de center ali. Ele tem que ganhar mais massa, corpo, né? mas consegue consegue é, superar isso com, com mobilidade né com bom chute de, com bom chute né tanto de fora quanto do, é, fora do perímetro quanto no perímetro e, e mostrou esses requisitos né é, ele se reuniu com o Nix na semana passada né e tal ele ele vem sendo um pouco assediado na, na questão do, 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 do draft porque ele mostrou é, condições de jogo né para jogar na NBA é, em torno de 10 ou 12 equipes, é, também mostraram interesse, né? Então ele vai receber um certo tipo de assédio nesse, nesse, nesse draft, né? E, e vamos ver né, o que pode acontecer. É, ele menciona né, que, a, como eu já tinha falado anteriormente, a, a base de fãs dele é muito grande, né? E, e, eles, e eles é o primeiro filipino na NBA, é um jogador extremamente alto e tal. Então todos esses requisitos né, é, fazem com que eles fiquem, eles fiquem super animados com esse jogador. Né, que com, e comparem ele, ele com, e compara ele com, com lendas né, da NBA, como o Yao Ming e, e o Karim do Jabá. Né, é, e, ele até mencionou, né, o Adam mencionou, que ele consegue ver né, alguma coisa entre o Yao Ming, mas não na questão de como ele vai na liga né, e tal, mas é, pela questão de ser um jogador que vem, que vem da Ásia, né, com expectativa, ser um jogador muito alto, 
com mobilidade, né? Consegue fazer um bom trabalho ali, se movimentar muito bem, espaçar a quadra, é, dar passe, ser um, um, um center ali que consegue fazer isso tudo, né? E que devido a todos esses fatores, né? É, vale a pena arriscar num jogador, num jogador assim, né? E tal, para poder jogar, né? É, na, na NBA e ter, e ter em seu time, né? É, e, e além disso, né, ele já está acostumado com a pressão, né, principalmente que recebe nas Filipinas, né, de ser esse primeiro jogador é, filipino na, na liga, né, e que isso já por si só já é muita pressão, né, de, de representar as Filipinas na, na NBA. What's your opinion uh, for the Knicks in this draft, né, and the off season? Yeah, so I can start with the draft. Um, you know, it's an interesting spot, um, picking 11th. At first, you know, you kind of get your hopes up that the Knicks will jump in the lottery, but obviously they didn't have great odds. Um, but I actually think for this draft um, in particular, they could get a really good player at 11. Um, I think there's this kind of consensus top four, right? There's Holmgren, um, Paolo Banquero, um, uh, Jabari Smith and then Jaden Ivey and then after that mm -hmm. it's kind of like no one really knows what the order is going to be um, so yeah we kind of were talking about a couple of names um, Johnny Davis, Dyson Daniels um, I'm personally a big AJ Griffin fan um, you know the, the wing out of Duke great shooter great shooter amazing shooter he apparently had a great um, workout the other day and um You know, Leon Rose and, and Tom Thibodeau were at the workout. Um, so, you know, it's, a, it's an encouraging sign. But, yeah, I think if I'm the Knicks, I kind of want to take a shot on one of these guys that has a little bit of risk, like A.J. Griffin because of his injuries. Dyson Daniels is also someone who, you know, coming from the Ty -ty. G League. Ty Ty also, same kind of thing where, you know, maybe he's – actually should be a top five pick, but there's these kind of other concerns that are holding him back. Um, so I think the Knicks are in a good spot where they could, you know, land one of those players. And I've heard some people talk about possibly trading up. Um, I'm not sure how realistic it is, but the two teams that I always hear are um, Sacramento at four, which would take a lot to get to. And then... Jaden Ivey, né? I mean, it could be worth it. It really could be. Um, and then I hear uh, Portland at seven could be another if they have a player they really like and want to trade up. But again, we just don't know enough um, to really say if they would trade up. But I think they have a lot of really good options at 11. Um, I'm, I'm very happy with where they're going to be. So I trust, I trust Leon Rose to make the right pick. They've had some good picks so far with this, with this, uh, with this front office. Ah, I trust in, in Leon too, but uh, I, I really see né, good players. Né? Uh, what do you think about, uh, for example, uh, Mark Williams? Uh, Knicks uh, needs a, a point guard, né? a PG, but uh, it's uh, Mitchell Robinson. Né? Uh, Mark Williams, it's a good option for the Knicks. Uh, Mitchell Robinson out, for example. Uh, Mark Williams is a, a, a good talent for the Knicks, or Jalen Duran, the Memphis Tigers? Yeah, so those are two names that could definitely be there at 11, um, Williams and Duran. Um, it's, that may be the biggest question of the Knicks offseason, right? Mitchell Robinson, what's going to happen with him? Because it leaves a hole, for sure. Um, I'm not sure if Nerlens Noel and... Jericho Sims can really get that job done. Um, but maybe Mitch stays. Um, if I'm talking my personal preference, um, it really doesn't have anything to do with those players. I think those are great players, Williams and Duran. But I almost feel as though I want to take more of a gamble with that pick. You know, the kind of guys we were talking about earlier with, um, with Daniels, Griffin, um, Benedict Matherin, all these guys that are there who... Maybe they don't fit in their first season, like they're not playing a ton, but maybe have that more star ceiling um, that, you know, we kind of want to take a risk on. And 
I could see the Knicks going for one of those big men, absolutely, Duran or, or Williams. Um, but maybe, you know, they wait for their second round pick to, to go for a center. Maybe Kai Soto's there with their second round pick um, at 42. Um, because, you know, taking Soto at 11 is probably a bit of a reach. So maybe they'd want to wait and see. But um, don't get me wrong. It's definitely an option, especially if, um, if Mitchell Robinson walks. Uh, do you like it uh, about uh, Jeremy Sohan? Uh, do you like it? Baylor, né? from Baylor. Yeah, I've seen him going really high in some in some mock drafts now. I feel like he's getting some buzz. Um, but he's another one that fits. Like, there's this, it's almost endless, the, the amount of, like, these guys that I can talk myself into the Knicks drafting. Um, Sohan, yeah, is definitely a good option because, yeah, I think we're probably going to talk about it in a sec, but point guard and just guards in general, like the Knicks kind of need to, they could use some bolstering up in the backcourt. Um, so that's definitely another name I'd watch out for. Uh, Tom Chimbo, though, uh, prob probably né? likes uh, Johnny Davis. It's a good defensor, né? It's, this is PG. Yeah, so Davis is a popular one just because I think everyone – Everyone would think that Tom Thibodeau would love Johnny Davis. You know, he's that like hardworking, um, defense first, kind of does all the dirty work kind of guy, um, which the Knicks honestly don't really have on their team. Like they don't really have that kind of, you know, nitty gritty role player. So I could definitely see Davis, um, especially at 11. Um, you know, he might fall because of some of these other names we're mentioning, like Sojan and um, um, Griffin. Dyson like Daniels. Dyson Daniels, like they've been all getting kind of a little more hype than than Davis, I think. So they might be gone, um, but I'd I'd definitely be happy with, with Davis at 11. Nah, me too, man. Me too. A próxima pergunta que é sobre o draft e, e sobre off season, eu vou dividir ela em duas partes, né? Começando que ele ele falou, né, a respeito do draft, ele disse que a, a, as pessoas sempre ficam na expectativa, né, do Knicks poder subir, ficou, ficou na expectativa dele do Knicks poder subir. Né, mas as apostas não eram muito altas, né? Tipo, o Knicks conseguiria é, surpreender nessa loteria e talvez cair numa posição mais alta. Mas é, ele acredita que na posição 11 dá para pegar assim, um bom jogador. Né? É, ele diz que é um consenso praticamente, né? o, o, o top 4 ali, né? Que é o, o Ogren, o, o Paulo Banqueiro, Banqueiro o Jabari Smith Jr. e o Jalen Ivey, né? E que depois ali vem os outros, os outros atletas e tal. E ele mencionou alguns que seria interessante, né? Para o Knicks, como o Johnny Davis, o, o Dyson Daniels. Ele vem acompanhando o AJ, AJ Griffin também, que é um, um, bom, um bom chutador, né? E, e eu fui até essa parte. Bem, continuando nesse trecho sobre o draft, né? Ele acredita que a posição 11 é uma posição boa né, e que o Knicks deveria ir em jogadores que têm um certo grau de risco, né, de lesões, essas coisas, ou de serem de um lugar mais distante, por exemplo, né, jogando outras ligas. Ah, aí ele citou o caso do AJ Griffin, né, que tem um risco de lesões e tal. É, o próprio Dyson Daniels, que jogou a NBL, né, uma liga, a liga australiana. E também mencionou, o, aí você mencionou né, no caso, Vitor, o Taita Washington, né? Ele reforçou o Taita Washington também, que tem essa questão, que teve que sofrer questão de lesões também e tal. E ele acha que o Knicks deveria ir nessa linha, né? Muito se fala sobre o Knicks trocar para subir, né? Dois times que aparecem na, em condições para trocas, né? Seria o Sacramento Kings. E o Portland Trail Blazer, né? O Sacramento com a quarta escolha, né? Que todo mundo sabe que é... Que provavelmente deve ser o Jaden Ivey, né? Então, tem esses jogadores, né? E no caso, você mencionou, por exemplo, a questão do, do center, né? Dos pivôs ali. Caso o Mitchell Robinson saia, né? O Mark Williams, ele acha bom jogador, né? Também o... o você mencionou o Jaden Duren, ele também acha né? bom jogar, que é um bom jogador. Mas ele que acha que nessa posição o Knicks não deveria ir atrás de um center assim e tal. E, e é que ele confia né, no Leon Rose para fazer boas escolhas né, desse, nesse draft. And the rumors, and the rumors, uh, Aiden, uh, from the Knicks. Uh, 
um, Donovan Mitchell, é, Jalen Brunson, é, Malcolm Brogdon. What, what, é, what do you think about this? Yeah, so there's definitely been those big name rumors. Um, you know, it's hard to gauge with this front office because they've been pretty conservative, honestly, in what they've done. I mean, there hasn't been too many huge deals. Um, like we've had the rumors going on, but we haven't had anything to really, you know, that actually happen yet. Um, it's hard for me not to get excited about Donovan Mitchell personally. Um, I actually played against him in high school. <laughs> um, he's from the New York area. So, you know, I have yes. a lot of, I have a lot of love for him. And honestly, if I'm gauging that situation, it really does feel like there's something wrong in Utah. Like there's with the locker room, it just doesn't, it feels like it's a ticking time bomb. Um, so they would have to give up a ton for Donovan Mitchell is the thing. Um, but I am a big fan of, of Mitchell. So I would honestly be happy with pulling trigger. Um, <laughs> as far as Brogdon, that's a very interesting one because I think people are a little divided because he's a great mm -hmm. player and he yes. fills a need. You know, we, we need a point guard like that. Someone who can set up the offense score um but the problem is he's just a little bit he's been you know he's been injured a lot Helch? lately it's yeah Helch in there. so it, that does give me a little bit of pause with brogdon like i don't think that's something we need to do right now just because of those concerns um what was the other one you said we have mitchell brogdon Jalen brunson from oh, dallas brunson. yeah that one i've gone back and forth on in my own head honestly a lot i just can't Because on one hand, you know, you have someone who's pretty young, um, kind of a rising talent, right? He's, uh, he's really breaking out now. Um, but then on the other hand, he's going to get paid a ton. And then if we pay Brunson, you know, we have money locked up in Brunson, Randall, and Fournier. We'll have to give RJ Barrett an extension soon. So I don't know if I want all of that long-term money kind of locked in there. Um, so I'm a little hesitant on Brunson too. Not that he's a bad player. I just don't know if I want to make that plunge. Uh, what do you think about RJ Barrett? Uh, for you, is the future of star or not? Yeah, I definitely think so. Um, he's, he gets a ton of criticism as a young player. You know, it's hard to be the face of the Knicks. Um, but every year he's just making these little steps. And I mean, the second half of last year, I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, but I mean, he was averaging around what, like 23 points or something like that, yes. six rebounds ish. Yes. Um, and he just looks so much more confident. Um, and I think it's in the conversation now where it's not, if he'll be an all-star really, if he'll be like a superstar, if, That is what I'm not exactly sure of. Like maybe I don't know if he's going to get the max um, contract on his on his next contract, but he's absolutely someone I'm re-signing. I love everything about his his work ethic, um, just his game. Everyone seems to love him. He's just someone that like it would be a huge mistake in my mind to you know not invest in R.J. Barrett because um, yeah, I think he's perfect for the Knicks and he's perfect for for New York City. Uh, I man, I believe so much in this man, guy. I have a Funko. <laughs> oh, wow, a Funko man, RJ I Barrett. That, man. Where'd you get that? <laughs> ah, my uh, Perfectus Archon, né? It's a company uh, partner from uh, Nick Fans Brazil channel. Oh wow! Uh, don't worry, man. Don't worry. Uh, oh, nice. <laughs> next year, next year, uh, our channel have a chance uh, to a trip to from New York. I say, I, I give to you, I give to you, you uh, don't have to do that, man. That's too cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But uh, I super, super believe in RJ Barrett, né? RJ Barrett, Emmanuel Kikley, né? I mm -hmm. like so much from him, né? But uh, we talk about uh, this player uh, in uh, the past. Né? It's a great guy for the Knicks fans. 
in the last season, Julius Randle. What what uh, what you think about this the future about this guy? Yeah, so Julius Randle's future is it's very hard because I felt myself kind of defending him for most of the season, not, you know, defending his play, but he had a lot of issues with kind of fans and just the media. Um, and I, part of me felt bad for him. Um, but, you know, now that we have a full season of it kind of under our belts, um, if you really think about it, like his amazing season last year was in that weird COVID year, right? Where there was no crowds. Um, there was no kind of that added New York pressure. Yes. And then you go back to his first year was not very great. I mean, the team wasn't great, but, you know, he honestly was more of that player this year, um, you know, his first year when he was struggling. So we have three years of Randall now where one of them was that amazing season with no crowds. And if you really put together like the evidence, I just, I genuinely think he has a hard time dealing with pressure, like dealing with the New York media, you know, just all of the kind of nonsense that comes with being on the Knicks. Um, and it takes, a, it takes someone, you know, with a lot of mental strength. Like I think of the, when Carmelo was, you know, the face of the Knicks, he yes. was, the media would tear him apart always. I mean, always. And, you know, Melo for, you know, not like the Knicks won any championships, but Melo really embraced New York and said, you know, yes, I can deal with this. And you, it's like you see R.J. Barrett doing that as well. He he admits when he makes mistakes, um, he puts in the work. And I just I don't because I don't know Julius Randle personally. You know, I don't know him like that. But there's something <laughs> there's just something there that isn't clicking. And as far as his future it's hard to say what the Knicks can do. Like, I don't really yes. know what his value is now um, because of his massive contract that just kicked in. Um, and I, it's not that he's a, he's not a terrible player. Um, no, no, no. But it's just I, his kind of, his fit with the Knicks is, um, it's tough. There's, there's, I, I think they might try to move him, but. I don't know what I don't know what a realistic trade really is for for Randall right now. Uh, Nick fans with Randall, Shh. Randall with Nick fans. Shh. <laughs> yeah, and to, uh, it, it's it's complicated. Uh, uh, this guy uh, uh, likes don't don't like it, play in the Knicks. Don't 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 don't. Uh, and the Nick fans don't like uh, this guy playing in the Knicks. Yeah. No. Yeah. I I, I feel I feel uh, this this uh, this feeling uh, the Nick fans and Julius Randle uh, passed to me. Uh, it gave me over. Gave me over uh, uh, between Nick fans and uh, Julius Randle. No. Uh, and Tom Timbaldo. Uh, what you uh, what you think about the this coach? Yeah, so I'm I'm actually more of a because he you know he has a lot of haters, he has a lot of fans. Yeah. Um, I, in I Brazil, actually, in Brazil, so many guys hate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's the thing he's a he's a hard coach. He, the, I honestly think that this because look, we have one great year and one terrible year under his belt. Yes. So I actually agree with kind of bringing him back for this third year, just to see what we have as opposed to just firing another coach. Um, so my thing is it's always, you know, Tom Thibodeau and he's not playing the young players enough, right? That's always the main dilemma is that he's not playing quickly and Grimes and reddish and OB enough. Um, but let's say this next season, they actually start playing more because we saw at the end of the year, they actually, you know, he's, he was kind of like, okay, let's see what we have. They all got better. I mean, I think yes. Manu quickly actually did get better. OB Toppin certainly got better from his, from his rookie year. 
So maybe in a way they actually are growing and developing. And, you know, by the third year, they're going to be playing bigger roles. Um, that could also be not true. Like it could also be that Thibodeau is still stubborn and annoying. And if that's <laughs> the case, that would, you know, I would See, yes. definitely flip sides. But I think they should give him another chance because the players seem to like him. Like quickly and Barrett seem to really like Tom Thibodeau. Um, so yeah, we'll see. I mean, it's uh, it's tough to gauge where the Knicks, how good they'll be. I know. I'm praying. Um, <laughs> but literally, yeah. literally praying. <laughs> always, always. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see how this year goes. Um, but I'm happy they kept him around for this year. Um. And, né, o, uh, what do you think about the future, about these uh, young players, né, young players, your opinion about uh, Emmanuel Kikley, Obi Taupin, Miles My McBride, Kenton Grimes, né, and the uh, younger players, né, uh, from the Knicks, what's your opinion? Yeah, so the Knicks have a lot of these really good young players. Um, the thing is that kind of what we were just talking about. Some of them haven't played enough to really know what they can be in the NBA. Um, uh -huh. But especially guys like Quickly, I mean, I wouldn't be mad at all. As a matter of fact, I would prefer if he was our starting point guard next season just to give him that I chance. I like you too. Yeah, just to give him that chance. Um, he deserves. <laughs> exactly. No, he really does. He really does. Um So a lot of these guys, um, they've looked good. I mean, they've they've played small roles for the most part, like Grimes and, and Toppin, but um, we've seen them have big games. Um, and, you know, I think going forward, the Knicks, some of their veterans, like let's say Alec Burks, um, Noel, they're going to be easy to trade because they'll have expiring contracts. So... Maybe the Knicks move on from some of them and slowly give these young guys more of a chance to, to grow. Um, but honestly, it's, it's encouraging to see. I think we were spoiled two years ago when we were the fourth seed. And, you know, we were like, oh, we're ready to win now. Like, we're, you know, we're ready to go to the championship. <laughs> yes. So this was, yes. yeah, this season was kind of a reminder that this is a young team. Um, it can be a really fun team. But, you know, we're still building the, uh, the foundation. So I hope that's the direction they go this season is to really, you know, let quickly, let top in, let Grimes play some more and, um, you know, really see what they have. Because it might be a really fun, you know, young team, um, which is all I want, really. Derek Rose can help these guys, in your opinion. Uh, I, uh, but uh, Derek Rose uh, will be a trait. Rose is tough to say because he, you know, he says he was injured, um, but he's still so good. I mean, yes, I like, like so much Dark Rose, man. Yeah. Yeah. Rose is you really we saw how much we missed him last season when he wasn't playing like he he just brings a level of, um, you know, experience that no one on our you know team really has. I mean, the guy's been an MVP. He's been a top player his whole life um and he obviously him and tom thibodeau are very close um so i'm not sure if rose will be traded but i hope he can at least stay you know more healthy this season uh i, I Derek rose uh it's it's a uh, good good health it's a uh, very important for, uh from this team uh, your talent your exper experience uh, Uh, help so much, né? Kikley and, and Obi Taupin, uh, in the last season, né? Uh, with Derek Rose, uh, played uh, so good with so him. Good. Né? Yeah. Obi Taupin, oh, uh, without Rose, oh, né? Derek Rose played with him, Der uh, Obi Taupin, né? Atlanta Hawks in the playoffs, Julius Randle, uh, popcorn, popcorn. <laughs> With the Hawks, Ob Topping. Ob it's uh it's on fire mm -hmm. with uh, Atlanta Hawks, né? Então, so Derrick Rose, for me, né, it's a very important in this team, né? But uh Cap uh, and then another uh, situations, uh né? 
but I like Derrick Rose uh, from this team, man. Yeah, me too. I mean, it's it's one of those things like we're talking about point guards, you know, maybe quickly and Derrick Rose together can just be the answer next Ooh. season. Um, as long as Rose stays healthy, because yeah, I mean Rose may may come off the bench, but he's still going to play, you know, twenty five minutes um, and still be a big part of the team so long as he's healthy. So fingers are crossed. I I hope he stays healthy. <laughs> <laughs> and Fournier, uh, it's a uh, it's, it's better trade or use uh, Fournier uh, going to the bench uh, for the three points in this in the. In the, in the plays, or, or, or what's your opinion about uh, Evan Fournier? Yeah, so Fournier, right, like he started the year pretty badly, was getting a lot of hate. Um, but unlike Randall, he kind of stuck with it. Um, and he turned out to be like a good player. I mean, it's, it's almost like, what else did we expect? Like, we know who Evan Fournier is. He's a very uh, good sniper. Shooter. Yeah, he's a great shooter. Yeah, not a great defender. Um, You can say the contract's a mistake. Like, it's not a perfect fit. But he's a good player. And I believe he has three more years, but the last year he can opt out or something like that. Yes. Um, So, honestly, going into next season, I think he's just going to play that same role. He's going to start on the wing. Um. You know, he's not immovable. Like, he's not, like I said, he's still a good player. And any every team can use shooting. So if the Knicks were to make a big trade, you know, Fournier has the big contract to, to match salaries. So, um, you know, I like Fournier. I don't think it was the best idea in hindsight. Um, but it's, you know, it's not something to really fret over. Um, honestly, his situation to me is... Much less, uh, much less damaging than Julius Randle's right now. Um, so, uh, Fournier uh, used it in the situations now uh, about three points in the uh, the, the, the play needs now uh, a, sh- a shoot maker. Now, uh, Fournier it's a, a very uh, good uh, option for the play now. But uh, I think uh, Knicks uh, will be a trade uh, with uh, Kemba. Uh, Kemba n- n- um, really don't 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 I mean, don't has uh, a trade, né? Because uh, Kemba the contract uh, a yeah. one year, né? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, contract uh, it's is over, finished, yeah. né? But uh, Noel Burks. Uh, uh, Fournier, you do you think uh, the Knicks uh, will be a trade uh, 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 with uh, someone player in this team or, or not? I definitely think so. Um, Randall, I know, <laughs> Randall, I hope, I hope so. Joking. Um, I mean, I, I, w- I honestly hope so, but yeah, because the thing is, it's like you know. Like, Alec Burks is still a good player. Um, he just yes. kind of, you know... Not PG, not PG. Exactly, not PG. exactly. He's not <laughs> a point guard. But there could be a team a at, at the trade deadline that could use another score. Um, and yes. Burks' his contract is expiring. He has the, the player option. So, um, yeah, some of those guys can definitely be traded. And, um, you know, they're not... They're not um, they're not long-term problems at all. I mean, they, they can be gone next season. So um, we'll see. But they, they, they can definitely be traded. Ah, great guy. Hey, with relation to the rumors of the Knicks, né, é, ele, é, você tinha mencionado three names, né, o Michael Brogdon, o Jalen Brunson e o Donovan Mitchell. Né. Ele, começou, ele, 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 mencionou, ele falou sobre dois, né, ele começou falando sobre Donovan Mitchell, com relação ao Donovan Mitchell, né, ele até divide uma coisa que é especial, que a gente já jogou é, com ele no, no high school e tal, né, e, e ele tem um, um carinho muito grande por ele e tal, mas ele acha que nessa situação, é, se as coisas forem mal é, no, no vestiário, alguma coisa em Utah, que para o Knicks poder trazer ele, vai ter que, se, tipo, você vai ter que liberar muitos jogadores, né, muitas coisas, escolhas e tal. Então eu teria que ver como é que isso seria feito, né? 
não sabe se esse momento agora seria interessante. E com relação ao Jalen Brunson, né, ele fala que o Jalen Brunson provavelmente vai, 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 vai pedir muito agora, né, nessa renovação, e provavelmente mesmo se for uma sign trade, vai, o Knicks vai ter que liberar muita coisa, e, e vai ter jogadores ali é, no elenco ali que ele não sabe se isso é interessante, né, gastar é, muito dinheiro com contratos a longo prazo, por exemplo, né, jogadores como Jalen Brunson, o próprio é, Fournier, é, Julius Randle, e, e ele mencionou né, que o, o Knicks vai dar um, uma extensão de contrato para o Bert, então vai aumentar o salário dele, e tudo isso somado pode comprometer muito né, a folha do Knicks, e o Knicks talvez não conseguir boas trocas, enfim, dentro desse contexto, então que seria interessante analisar isso tudo, né, mas que ele, Ara, é, não, não faria esses movimentos por agora. Man, thank you so much, thank you so much, uh, you are coming, né, in this channel, I like you so much, man, you are a great guy, man, you are a <laughs> no, great you, guy, you too, forgive man. my English, forgive my English, my bad English, but... I don't uh, know what you're talking about, your English is totally fine, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, como é que é, I have Bruno, né, my superhero, save me, <laughs> in yeah, the lives. Bruno. <laughs> yes. But yeah, thank you for having yeah. me on. Really, I, I really appreciate it. No, thanks so much. Uh, Bruno, uh, you you uh you'll be a translator né, in this life after uh Adam leave the the this channel, né? But uh thanks again, eh? Obrigado de novo, Bruno. <laughs> oh, don't worry, Victor. Uh, I'm here to support you and and uh it's honor to receive Adam here for us. It's, it's a very good thing. And, and hear more about the Knicks, about the draft, and about everything. It's, it's good for all Brazilian fans to, to talk because the, uh, I, I think the draft is the most exciting for me in the, in the off season, of course, because <laughs> we, 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 we see the prospects, we see the players, and uh, it's exciting to, 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 to imagine who the Knicks will get. So I think, I think. I think right now, uh, is in my opinion, of course, the Knicks in the, in the right direction. So uh, it's just it, it's hard to, to 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 ask it to all all Knicks fans. Uh, okay, be patient. We we need to build this team. So uh, <laughs> been waiting for so long. <laughs> of course, so of long. Course. I am Knicks fan since '92, man. '92. <laughs> there you go. At least you had the '90s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Peter, Peter have 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 a lot of memories. We okay. and we we just suffering. <laughs> okay, so right. good, so good. I I gave that a yeah. read right when it came out. It came out somewhere in my house. Uh, I uh, we make it alive with uh, Chris Henry. Oh channel. yeah, he's a great Chris, guy. Uh, Chris, like yeah. you, so great guy, man. So great oh. guy, like you. Oh, really. <laughs> the <Yeah>. same. <laughs> And, uh, and I, we, we né, uh, me and Bruno, hope né, we'll uh, see you in this channel in the future, man. I, I like so much. This, yeah, the... feel free to reach out whenever. Um, you know, I've always got some time on my schedule at, at different points. So let me know. Just yeah. reach out whenever you want. It, and thanks uh, information about, about Kai Soto. Uh, I, I like, né, uh, assim, I, I like so much, né? Your information about this player, né? Uh, so, ma uh, so many uh, channels and uh, people talk about him. You save me, Eden. You save me <laughs> with <the> inf information. <laughs> hey, man, it's uh, he's he's someone that everyone is kind of talking about, um, in part because he's a good player, but he's got such a I mean, we said it a few times already, he's got so many fans in the Philippines. Um, and it'd be cool to see, he's the first um you know filipino player to play in the nba so you you have to root for that right i mean it's uh it would, it would be great to see yeah when have, it's a when great, have a player it's a great uh, uh, sorry bruno it's no, a no. great ad advertising from philippines exactly yeah, 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 the, the business it's a great adversity yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry yeah. bruno no don't worry i think i think everyone excited when when have a player overseas and uh And uh, his size, uh, uh, so far, in a different, the, the different uh, uh, 
uh, place in the in the earth, for example, the people don't know about the basketball in the Philippines and, and all these type of things you put together and uh, everyone wants to see what's happened with this guy. So I think I think in the future we'll, uh, we will discover it, but it is a very good uh, hear the news about him and about and hear about everything. And thank you again, man. No, of course. Again, let me know um, anytime. But uh, yeah, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Next to see you. Take care, guys. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye.